Good morning. My name is Pastor Jen at the International Christian Fellowship of Rome, and I am here with these beautiful friends of mine to encourage your faith and to do another video Bible Connect so that women can be strong in any circumstance. So I want to introduce my friends or let them introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Audrey, and I am a missionary here at the International Christian Fellowship of Rome. Hi, I'm Helen, I'm from Ethiopia, and I'm here serving in the UK team. Hi, I'm Angel, I'm from the Philippines, and I'm part of the worship team and translation team. Yes, and all of these people also do a lot of things because they have such a servant's heart. And I also believe it's because you have faith in your life and you want to serve the Lord. And when we serve the Lord, that does activate our faith. So I wanted to start us with a scripture verse in the Bible today. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. Thank you, I don't have my glasses. It says, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. And so today I want to remind us that when we're faced with a difficult circumstance, or even as the holidays are approaching with lonely times, whatever that might be, we don't belong to those who shrink back. We stand forward, we stand up, and we activate our faith. So Audrey, maybe you could share something about how faith matters to you. What does it mean to have faith in God and to let that faith be a part of your life? Uh, so for me, faith is whenever I'm stepping out into the unknown and I have no idea how a promise that God has made to me is going to come to fruition. And so there have been many different parts of my life that I've had to step out and say, God, I trust you, you know what's best, and I trust that even though I don't know all the details of the plans of how it's going to happen, I know that you do and I can trust in you in that. And so that's one of the things that God is constantly working in my life and presenting me with um, new promises and new possibilities and areas to trust Him in. I love that you said new possibilities, because what that really means is new challenges, mm -hmm. and it's a possibility to let faith be activated in the challenge, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Angel, you have um, recently accomplished your graduation from university, and I know you are a multitasker. Um, how does faith make a difference in your life, and, and just talk to us a little bit about what, what faith in Christ means to you. So, well, basically, I think that my relationship with God is founded um, through faith. So, if I don't have faith in God, it means that how can I even call myself as a Christian? Mm -hmm. For me, it's that strong because I believe that to have a relationship with God is having the relationship, you know, the trusting relationship, like, for me as a child and Him as my father. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So, having faith actually means trusting the Heavenly Father to take care of your life. Yes, no matter trusting what. Him in every process, like the scripture said, like in um, Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5, um, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're trying to understand, you won't understand because God's plans are higher than your plans. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe in, that's my faith in Him, in my journey in life as a young um, adult. Yes. <laughs> that's what I always think of and trust. I love that you put faith and trust together because a friend of mine, a mentor of mine one time said, faith is stepping out on nothing and feeling it becomes something as God takes care of the next step. Helen, what has faith meant to you as you have grown in your walk with the Lord? Like Angel said, I think faith for me is um, a lot of trust and just depending on God and knowing that that's the foundation I built. And I remember a pastor once put an example of a child's chair, a little one, and a big chair, and he said, logically, we would trust the bigger chair, but I think when we have faith, it's to believe that even if I sit on this little child's chair, knowing that I'm not a child, I will still be able to sit and not fall, because I have that faith. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's great. Um, let's talk about a time when it wasn't so easy to have faith. This week, actually, I don't know if you have Facebook or social media, but you know those memories pop up. And a memory popped up of my husband, who I've been married to for 41 years, eight years ago, when we were going into a surgery for his brain tumor. And there were men of faith gathered around us before the surgery, and that was the picture. And I just remember, after a couple hours, the doctor came out and aborted the surgery, 
for the first time ever that a doctor had aborted a brain surgery in that hospital and said there's no hope. And guess what? Eight years later, Faith says God healed him, restored him, God took the tumor out miraculously. But I said, it struck me that friends who pray with you in the worst of times or the worst of news become the best of friends. Because when our faith is low, someone else's faith strengthens us. So let's talk a little bit about maybe one of those times when our faith was low, but the sisterhood, belonging to other women who believe and have that friendship and that sisterhood, how did that help you? Or does it help you? Um, so for me, I would say any time that I encounter um, stepping out in faith, it's always very important for me to be surrounded by other strong Christian women because it can help encourage me. It can say, I know you don't see what this next step is. I know you don't see how it's going to happen. But remember how God helped me in this situation. Or remember how God helped you in this situation. Or here are some different scriptures of someone that went through a similar story. And it's just really... It's not just your faith that's helping you get through it. It's the faith of your leaders and your sisters that are helping you as well. And the Bible talks about a cord of three strings not being easily broken. And I believe that that's also the sisterhood as well. Of whenever you're surrounded by your friends and family, that they help just encourage you and give you that little extra push and support. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And in a sisterhood of faith, it's a safe place. That's what we've established here in Rome at the International Christian Fellowship in Bella Vida, in our Braveheart Girls Talks. Um, Helen, I want you to talk a little bit about how sisterhood has helped you, but how you knew it was safe to share so someone else could increase your faith. I think um, for me personally, during like times where I'm struggling and I'm having to do with trusting the Lord, but also knowing that I have to just stand on faith and knowing that the people around me are just the ones that help me to deal and continue to stay intact with my faith because when they're serving and when they're in faith and when their lives are coming together it encourages me to continue to be in faith because God always comes to mm -hmm. Angel how about you a time when maybe it was difficult but there was this friendship group, this maybe in the young adult group or whatever, where you just knew, like, I'm not giving up. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it helps a lot to be surrounded by people who have a strong faith in Christ. Um, you know, the Bible says no man is an island. So I think that many people do isolate themselves. They tend to isolate themselves when they go through problems and difficult problems, like, oh my God, I can't share this, I can't share that. But I believe that it's very important to have that, you know, connection with people, especially, um, you know, with people who you know are inspiring and you know who will be able to give you advices, mm -hmm. like really good advices. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it has helped me a lot because I know that um, I cannot go through life alone. Mm -hmm. I have to go through life with other people like you guys <laughs> and um, other, you know, other people like you and people of my age as well. Yes, yes. And obviously with God. Yes, and I love that we, we do have generational friends and people that encourage mm -hmm. us. And um, even when someone little, a little child, is standing to worship the Lord and raising their hands and just saying, I love you, Jesus, or dancing with Jesus, that's inspiring to me to see that every generation has their, their heart being moved and touched by God because He wants us to have faith, not only in the good times, but in the difficult times. So, any other scriptures or things that you want to share? Well, one of the things that I was actually reading through this year um, was in was it First Samuel um, chapter seventeen? It's about David and Goliath, and what really struck me is like um, he, David, as a young person, he kept believing in God that no matter what people say, like even his own family, like even his brothers were like, oh, what are you doing here in the battlefield? Because he has to fight against Goliath. And he believed that he could defeat him. And so his brother was like, oh, what are you doing here? You shouldn't be here. You should be going and taking care of the sheep. <laughs> but, you know, um, he, I believe that in that moment, he had a really strong faith in God, that he trusted God, that that battle, was not his, but it's the Lord's yes. battle. So, yes, that's, that's awesome. one of the things I love. 
And I think going off of that, um, we always go through difficult times, and of course there are challenges that we have to accept and go through them with the Lord. But the one thing that helps us to continue is the fact that we have faith, but also to realize that the faith we had during the difficult times that happened in the past mm -hmm. can be a witness to you that it will pass. Yes. This problem or challenge that we're in will pass too because he's done it before and he will do it again. Mm -hmm. And just as they were talking, I was reminded of um, Joseph and all of the different trials that he went through. Of he had gotten the promise at a very young age um, in dream form, as far as like um, his brothers and family bowing down to him, and he shared that, and it was premature in the sharing, and he had to go through different struggles and trials along the way. But he kept his faith, and he was able to say, "No, my God is with me." He still kept to his morals, and whenever Potiphar's wife tried to come upon him, he fled and was like, no, I'm not going to be a part of this. And he went into prison and God blessed him there as well because he still kept with his morals and he kept with his faith and said, no, my God is with me and I will serve him through every circumstance, the good and the bad. And God continued to honor him through that and continued to bless him all the way to the point where his dream did come to fruition. And so I just think it's really awesome um, of an example of even in the midst of everything, when we continue to rely on God through it all, he continues to bless us through Yes, and I love that you equate having faith also means how we do our life, our lifestyle, and what God is saying to us. And so I believe even right now I feel in my heart that there might be someone watching, someone who will hear this video at some point, and you feel like giving up, and you feel like just surrendering to the pressure of those around you. Remember the verse in Hebrews chapter 10, we do not belong to those who shrink back but to those who have faith and are saved. And so what I think that means for, for you, for us, is that no matter what we're walking through, no matter what challenge or mountaintop we're about to climb, the victory is ours. We stand firm on faith in Christ, faith in the Word of God. It's heaven's love letter to us. All of us have talked about the Bible. The Bible is so important to the walk of faith and to walking in victory. So thank you. We're going to pray for the ladies before we go. Father, we just agree together right now, Jesus, that you would be with every sister watching this video. So whatever she is going through, she would not shrink back. She would not be afraid. She would know, God, that her faith in you is strong and that you are strong even when her doubts are strong. You are stronger. You're stronger than anything. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So God, keep our hearts, keep our minds, and keep our lives and our actions rooted and grounded in the Word of God, in the Bible, in Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and may everyone know how to be a brave heart girl. In Jesus' name, amen.